Hello there. It's been very warm over the last few days. We've seen temperatures knocking close to 30 degrees on Monday, possibly repeating that on Wednesday. And for some of us, that might end with a bit of a bang on Wednesday night. More on that uh, in just a couple of moments or so. But first up, here's the jet stream at the moment. As you can see at the moment, it's to the north of the UK, and that's allowing this high pressure to build in and keep things relatively settled, as we've seen in recent days. But over the next few days, for the remainder of this week, you'll see the jet stream no longer to the north. Instead, we're actually developing this long wave trough to the west of Europe, uh, this big dig down in the jet stream. And on the forward side, we get these southerly winds higher up in the atmosphere, bringing pulses of very warm, humid air, unstable air, towards the southern half of the UK in particular. So this is going to be quite a challenge, I think, nailing the site-specific detail, because little ripples along this jet stream will spin up areas of low pressure later on this week, bringing the threat of areas of heavy rain. Some of that might have a little bit of thundery activity in it, but a lot of it, I think, will probably stay uh, over the nearby continent, but still the risk of some heavy rain for some parts of the UK later this week. So a big change from where we are now, relatively dry and settled and warm, to something much wetter with some pretty heavy bursts of rain in places over the next few days. Wednesday is probably the last dry, warm, an increasingly humid day across the southeast. Here we could still see quite a bit of sunshine and temperatures close to 30 degrees uh, once again. We've got this cold front on Wednesday straddling the Irish Sea. This will gradually weaken through the day as it slowly drifts southeastwards. So some rain, but it will be turning patchier and lighter through the day. Behind it, a bit of a breeze into western Scotland, cooler here with some showers coming in off the Atlantic into western Scotland. But later on Wednesday, it's all eyes to this area of low pressure developing over the Bay of Biscay because this could allow some thunderstorms to push into southeast England, parts of East Anglia on Wednesday night. Big question marks about how widespread the rain from this may well be, as I'll show you in just a moment. But the threat there then for some very heavy bursts of rain, some quite lively thundery activity in the southeast at least on Wednesday night into the early part of Thursday. So as I say, there is some uncertainty. This sort of highlights that quite well. Four different computer models. There are many more available out there, uh, but just highlighting really. Now, clearly they all have a very similar picture at first glance with this corridor of heavy rain running up from northern France across southeast Britain and out into the North Sea. But the exact position of this corridor uh, shifts depending on which model you're looking at. And on this one up here, for example, it's almost as far west as Cardiff. Uh, whereas this one down here, it's pretty much sort of London as the western extent. So I do think there is the risk that there will be some heavy rain spreading up, the heaviest rain across southern England, pushing through parts of the Midlands, East Anglia, and then out into the North Sea. But as I say, there is some uncertainty. So depending on which weather app you're using, uh, will also depend on which of these models it's using to pick up the forecast. And I think it will chop and change quite a bit over the next uh, day or two as it tries to firm up the detail. Thunderstorms are notoriously difficult to pinpoint exactly how things will evolve. But what you can see here is quite clearly some places will be getting an inch or more of rain. And in some cases, in this particular model here, for example, there's scope for maybe two inches of rain in a relatively short period of time, a few hours. So that could cause some flooding problems uh, in some places Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Incidentally, these are the 24 hour accumulations from 7 p.m. Wednesday evening through to 7 p.m on Thursday as well. So potentially some quite lively conditions. As I say, the lightning activity most likely across southern, southeastern England into East Anglia, but the rain could be more widespread further west uh, than just those areas as well. So this is how Thursday starts when with the leftover of that and some uncertainty about how quickly this will pull out into the North Sea. There might be a drier interval. We could see one or two afternoon thunderstorms on Thursday, depending on how much sunshine we get. But quickly into Friday, another low coming up from the south with more heavy rain and then into the weekend, another low late Saturday and into Sunday. So we've got these successions of low pressure systems coming in. The timing and position of these will chop and change, no doubt over the next few days. But just bear in mind, there are further pulses of heavy rain potentially to come out of France into southern Britain as we go through the rest of this week and indeed through into the weekend as well. Now across northern parts, we have got higher pressure up here. So less in the way of wet weather across Scotland and Northern Ireland, still a few showers, but overall compared with the more widespread heavy rain in the south, I think things will be somewhat drier and, and a little bit calmer uh, further north. Now, after Wednesday night, most of the lightning acti activity probably staying across the continent, not affecting the UK too much. But we could see a little bit perhaps creeping into the extreme east of East Anglia, maybe southeast England at times, such as Wednesday, uh, such as Friday evening rather. Um, but apart from that, I think it's more of a rain issue rather than a, 
necessarily a lightning issue during the second half of the week. So with all that going on, trying to track where the rain and thunderstorms are near you, uh, I certainly advise uh, subscribing to WQ Radar because here you can see exactly where those thunderstorms are. You can get lightning alerts sent to you as well when lightning is detected uh, near you and heading towards you. And you can look at all the other weather observations as well around the UK or indeed around the world, temperature, wind speed, and that sort of thing as well. And at the moment, we're running this discount code. If you use the discount code SUMMER, you'll get it at nearly half price for your first year subscription. So plenty more information available on the website, wqradar.co.uk. So that's how things are looking to the end of this weekend. As we go into early next week, well, again, don't take the positioning too literally. There's a lot of uncertainty about the specific detail, but the broad theme is low pressure will be over Western Europe, particularly over the UK. So I think overall the first part of next week will still be unsettled with some of these areas of low pressure bringing the risk of some rain and showers in some parts of the UK. But some of that detail will be difficult to nail at this uh, early stage. What we do see is higher pressure out west. That might try and build a little bit more as we head towards the end of next week. So things might settle down uh, later on in the week. But as you can see from this ensemble graph here of pressure, uh, there is a lot of spread. So clearly where these ensembles are very close together at the beginning, high confidence in the forecast. You can see the pressure is dropping as we get, th get through Wednesday night into Thursday as that wave of thundery activity comes up from the south. Uh, but then we get a big spread developing very quickly, quite early on actually in the sequence, just highlighting the uncertainty that is there quite early on for the end of this week, Friday into Saturday, with those areas of low pressure coming out of France. Exactly how widespread that rain will be and how much of the UK will be affected is yet really to be um, determined. But clearly there are signals here for some lowish pressure to come in at times for the weekend and into the beginning of next week. Then there is a trend, this red line here is obviously the average of all of these gray lines, that pressure will start to rise a bit more as we go through the second half of next week. So things might start to settle down a, li a little bit and uh, turn a bit drier and a bit brighter overall as well. But again, there's still a lot of spread and even some of these members here trying to bring in another area of low pressure. It has fairly limited support, admittedly. Equally, some fairly high pressure coming in on some of these members, but again, not a strong signal for that either. So a trend for pressure to rise through the second half of next week, but not exactly a massively strong high pressure that would give us necessarily a week of uh, constant dry weather. I still think there's going to be the risk of some showers in there or even some weather fronts coming in at times as well. But overall, perhaps becoming a little bit less wet again during the second half of next week and into next weekend. And more or less flat lines, if anything, there's a slight downward trend as we head towards the beginning of July, perhaps indicating low pressure coming back again. So I think there will be this oscillation between you get a bit of a ridge building in for a few days, giving us some settled conditions, and then lowish pressure comes back in again with some rain or showers for a few days, and then back to the ridge once again. So at the moment, there's not really a strong signal for a lot of low pressure or equally a lot of high pressure. It's very mixed and uh, sort of typical really for the time of the year. So if you're trying to make hay, for example, I think at this stage, it's gonna be difficult to pinpoint exactly which periods will be favorable if you want a week of dry weather, for example, because there could still be uh, some areas of rain or showers that just crop up after three dry days, for example. So hopefully we can nail that down as we get a little bit closer uh, to time. In terms of how it looks into the very end of June into early July across the bigger picture of Europe, well, as you can see, if you watch our videos in the winter, quite often these maps have a lot of color on them. But in the summer months, predictability is usually a lot lower. And that's shown by the lack of color showing up on these maps here. So there's a hint of slightly lower than average pressure uh, to the north and slightly higher than average pressure to the south. But it's a pretty weak signal. Uh, overall for any one particular weather type to dominate. Now you notice quite a bit of brown here, so in theory quite a bit of dryish weather, relative to normal that is, across much of uh, Europe as you can see here, rather wet down in the southeast. And at the moment signals are for near or slightly below average rainfall over the UK as well. Doesn't mean completely dry or weak of course, because it still means we could see some rain, but perhaps not as much as we might see over the next five to seven days, for example. And on the temperature side, quite a strong signal here for much of Europe to be warmer than average. So the hot conditions prevailing, further heat waves possible across much of uh, Europe. The UK on the edge of that, but I still think there is potential that we might tap into some hot air at times in the southeast, particularly uh, towards next weekend. That's around the 25th, 26th uh, through to perhaps the 28th, 29th, that sort of thing. Then as we go into the beginning of July, well, this is how the pressure pattern looks. Again, it's fairly weak signals, lower than average pressure across much of Europe, but in a weak sense. Uh, a signal here that the low pressure may not be quite so dominant to the northwest here. So perhaps something a little bit drier developing 
as we head into early July. But what this basically says is whatever weather patterns we get will be slow moving, will be blocked, and it will take some time to shift it, whether we're stuck under low pressure or high pressure, for example. Uh, so again, rainfall at the moment looking near or slightly below average, but again, not a strong signal for lots of dry weather, but on balance, more dry than wet potentially in terms of number of days um, during this uh, time frame. And on the temperature side of things, interesting sort of near normal temperatures in the northwest of Europe, whereas many other eastern and southern parts are above average. Again, very warm conditions here. So I think the problem with these maps is they average a seven day period and you can quite easily get three potentially hot days in there and then four cooler days and it all averages near normal. Uh, so it hides some of that detail that we could still see, certainly this time of the year, some quite hot conditions at times coming up from the nearby continent. But obviously at this early stage, it's going to be difficult to say exactly when uh, they may crop up. So in summary, Wednesday is the last dry, warm, humid sort of day in the southeast because there will be an increasing risk of heavy rain at various times this week, particularly Wednesday night into Thursday, another wave late Friday and another wave late Saturday into Sunday in the south and some of that could well be thundery in the far southeast and east anglia in particular further rain or showers likely to start next week perhaps they're becoming a bit dry later in the week as that ridge tries to build in from the southwest and so we see this oscillation then through the rest of the month and into early july between some drier weather for a few days and then some wetter weather uh, for a few days generally the wettest conditions in the northwest much of the time and overall the drier conditions more south and southeast you are across the UK. But it is that time of the year where predictability is a little bit difficult uh, because it's the summer season, of course. You can keep up to date, though, with the day-by-day -day forecasts as they evolve uh, by following us on social media. Bye for now.